Hey, everyone, your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne. It's Joan Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. We've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. Hey, you guys, it's episode 155, and today we're talking about something that I think might uh, trigger everybody's interest. Is your house stressing you out? Mm. Mm. I love this topic. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you can have real easy fixes for that might be causing you some stress. You don't even realize Mm -hmm. that. So we're going to run through some things that we've uh, researched and things that are going on in our own houses. And of course, as always, we would love to hear from you after the episode. So definitely call us or email us with if there's anything stressing you out in your house or whether we touched on anything to help you avoid some stresses. Things that are happening in your house the way it's decorated or the way you function in your house can be causing you stress. And we don't want you to be stressed out. Well, Mm -hmm. can I talk about this for just one second before we get into the things? I I think sometimes we tend to think that decorating is a frivolous activity, that it's not important and spending money on your decorating is really kind of fluff money. You know, not something, you know, you got to do the, well, I mean, some things do come first, I guess, paying your water bill, that sort of a thing. (laughs) It does. But, yes, but the, but your house, I believe from the bottom of my heart, impacts your mental health. It impacts your physical health. If your house, if walking in your house causes you stress for whatever reason, that's going to increase your cortisol levels, and that will and it can very much impact your health. Mm-hmm. I agree so with you, Anita. This is really a case of mm-hmm. this is something important to do for yourself. I mean, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. <laughs> Amen, Nita Jean. Mm-hmm. That's uh, right. Absolutely. Ding that bell. Ding that bell. <laughs> that bell. <laughs> absolutely. I so agree with everything that you just said. Mm-hmm. It is not frivolous. It impacts your mental health, your sense of well-being, and that of everybody in your family. I, you know, again, I walk into a lot of places, a lot of houses, and people want to start decorating, but you know, there's so much obvious stresses in the house uh, that they need to clear all of that up first before you get onto the decorating. And then once you decorate it and it's beautiful and it gives you this sense of calm and peace and that it's a sanctuary from the from the world, that is the best gift that you can give yourself and that of your family. So I think you need to think about when you walk in your house, Do you does it feel like a warm hug or does it feel like, oh, I can't stand this? Is it like nails on a chalkboard? Yeah. And if you're having mm-hmm. that nails on a chalkboard, it is very vital, I believe, for your health that you get that taken care of. Maybe there's some repair that, that's been nagging at you, but let we're going to talk about some things in your house that might be stressing you. And so I really want you to look at this seriously and, uh, you know, take some action wherever you need to. Good, good, good. I, yeah. uh, I agree 100%. And- and that and the, cortisol, that's a stress uh, hormone. And yes. we know what hormones can do. And that's mm-hmm. what, you hormones want to keep are, those hormones in check. Hormones are good <laughs> and hormones are evil. You have to walk yes. the balance. Hey, I think one, one for me, the biggest stressor in my house is if there's clutter. Oh, yes. Well, I think that's probably the number one for mm-hmm. most people. Mm-hmm. Well, then I think that's the ugly beast we need to address. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, but there's different types of clutter. So I'm hoping we can be a little more specific because there may be some clutter that people aren't even thinking about as being clutter. Well, here's what I'm talking about. Good point. I come in through the garage, put my coat away and do all that in the mudroom, walk into my um, kitchen and there is stuff on my island. Yeah. That drives Oh, me. don't put your stuff on my island. Mm-mm. I know. And then <laughs> I'm telling you, I literally could turn around and walk out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because finding or, you know, having something on a table where it doesn't belong or uh, a basket of things that you still have to put away, those that really stresses me out. I think you're absolutely right. And there's probably, it's not just... I don't want people just go, oh, clutter, and then they clean up one table and think they're done. Think about it. We're going to be talking about different types of clutter. But the one, so for you, I think a hot point for you is that island. And so I think that is something, if 
And I know there's certain things, if there's certain areas of your home that seem clean and organized and uncluttered, you can mm-hmm. maybe ignore some other areas. I know for yeah. me, a really special area for me that really needs to stay clean and organized is my closet. I don't have any dressers in my bedroom. All of our uh, clothing organization is in built-in cabinets in the closet. So Ooh, I spend a lot of- beautiful. So I go in my closet to get dressed in the morning. Uh, that's where all my jewelry is. That's where- um, not that I have anything, nothing worth stealing. I'll go ahead and say that. <laughs> I was just going to say, gonna, oh, you just told the burglars where all your, no, all the jewels I are. I don't have, I don't have real jewelry. So there's nothing in there that you're interested in. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> the necklace made out of uh, a broken piece of plate. Yes. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. That is a beautiful necklace. But I think, I think if people would address their clutter and then put things where when you touch something touch it once put it back where you got it you know you don't want to put it in another pile to hide it and then the piles flowing you know, overflowing i think it's such a good idea to really make a commitment to control your clutter mm-hmm. well and like going right i agree with that and for example uh i think all of, it's important for all of your closets to be neat and organized but for mm-hmm. me my personal closet i spend a lot of time in so that one's more important to me so i don't have clutter on the floor there's not stuff i don't just bring stuff in there and set it down it's got to be put up mm-hmm. and all my clothes are organized by you know, short sleeve, long sleeve, by colors. My shoes are in one cabinet. My purses are in another cabinet. And I recently even cleaned out, I think I mentioned I got a couple new purses and then got rid of probably 10. And wow. so I have just a few, but I mm-hmm. can see them all. And I, it's easy to find my shoes now. I got rid of a bunch of shoes I weren't, wasn't wearing and unloaded a bunch of clothes that might've been a bit snug. So um, <laughs> that were just depressing me when I put them on. Talk about stress. And Nita, I love you. You said the you said the magic word. You got rid of them. Mm-hmm. I did. You know, you we really need to um, declutter and organize because I think that stresses a, ho- a house out, and in turn stresses us out more than anything else. Yeah, I find when I have been out for a whole day, or like when I came back from that that the dream house, and so I've been gone mm-hmm. for a couple of days, and you know, my kids are teenagers and they take their stuff off. And no matter how many times they say it, it just kind of lands on the floor. (laughs) So each room that I went to, and Mm -hmm. I was completely de-stressed when I was on my little trip and I came back (laughs) and I walked in and, you know, I walk into uh, backpacks and shoes Mm -hmm. and I can feel my shoulders going up. And up and up. And I know. now I know that it's cortisol and I could feel it going. Right. And then I go to the bathroom and there are wet towels on the floor. So it, sometimes it's not even stuff that you are necessarily ready to let go of or purge. Although, you know, I'm a huge purger. Um, mm-hmm. But sometimes it's just stuff that's not in the right place. And it also can be things like too many things on display. You know, maybe there are just oh, too many things on right. your... Mm -hmm. coffee table. There are too many things on the end table. There are too many things on the shelf. You have a china cabinet packed, packed, packed with things. So when you look at it, you can't really enjoy it. And it just seems like uh, just, you know, like a maze of clutter and everything is smashed in into a small area. You might want to think about honing that down as well, because those things, even though it's like, oh, those are my special things on display. It might be causing you stress rather than giving mm-hmm. you any pleasure if they're not showcased in a way where you can appreciate mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And Anita right, said right. this many um, podcasts ago, or, or maybe it was you, Kelly, but rotate. You can rotate the things you love. Yeah, Anita's right. a big rotate. Yeah, yes. you I don't got have to use everything her. all at once. And you right. don't have to say goodbye to something forever. You can right. rotate. Mm-hmm. Hey, there was this interesting, before we move on to another uh, aspect of stress in your home, while we're on the the clutter aspect. I had read a bit of a UCLA study. They studied 32 families over four years. and Four years, that's a long time. Yeah. And the number one stressor was, get this, managing the volume of possessions. (laughs) 
<laughs> was oh, such a problems. crushing problem right, in right. many homes that mm. it significantly elevated the levels of stress hormones, particularly in the mothers. Yes, yes. That is well, a direct because, quote. Well, you know, we are yeah. all in charge. The mothers are all in charge of everything right. that comes into it's the house. It's her problem. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's the mom's problem. All right. That. So... Put and, it away, wash it, give it away, do whatever, you know, you're in charge of, t- of making that thing get where it should be. <laughs> well, and that's why, right. I mean, get rid of this stuff that you're not using, the broken stuff. Get rid of it. You're not going to fix it. Yeah. These, but isn't that amazing? Drawer. Oh, and yes. these were uh, mid, like mid class, middle class families. You know, it's not like people that had, had oodles and oodles and oodles of cash just to mm-hmm. buy more and more stuff. But uh-huh. these people had so much stuff. That well, they but I think here's we're being I crushed think, by it. But here's another thing I think that's happened, and it's a very sad thing in my mind. Rather than you would in the old days buy, you were going back to the polder spoons. Maybe you'd buy one or two expensive, well-made spoons that you would use. Now you can get them for a dollar. Yeah. And then you think, well, I'm going to grab 20 of them. So now you got to find room Good for 20 point. spoons and yes. 20, mm-hmm. you know, 20 of mm-hmm. this and 20 and then measuring cups. And yeah. And then, then, then they're, you don't have room for them. And then they're breaking because they're, bumping up against each other. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they also said the rise mm-hmm. of the, sort of the big box store well, because mm-hmm. encourages mm-hmm. people to stockpile. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, I don't have all these paper towels. So now you're walking over your paper towels, <laughs> you know, to get some like, <laughs> <laughs> stop the yes, madness. Yes, I know. Yeah. I know. I mean, and that's yeah. why it might be good to even think about maybe an Amazon pantry where do you deliver it just when you need it, just what you need, mm-hmm. and you're not having to go to the store and or just anyway, some sort of service like that. Because, they, yeah. yeah, when you buy, yeah, it's like, great, we've got toilet paper now, but we have enough for a year's worth. And right. where am I going to store it? <laughs> exactly. And another stressor that segues from this mm-hmm. initial one that we're talking about is then the searching, right? So if you have less stuff, you have probably a better chance of finding what you're looking for, mm-hmm. but searching for stuff in your house causes oh, yeah, a we've lot talked of about stress. That. We have, well, and I'll tell you, I'm the yeah. queen of that. And that drives me insane to the point where if it's not that expensive, I, I just would rather buy another one. And then well, I know, but then the it's stress all effects. Then yeah. you feel it awful when you realize you already had five of that. I know. And I talked about where I would put things up and then I couldn't find them later. And here's the thing. If it's, sometimes it doesn't really matter. Sometimes it's a $2 item. You can just easily go replace it, but doesn't it just drive you nuts? Cause you know, it's somewhere in your house. You don't uh-huh. know where it is. Uh-huh. I can't going, sleep. I've got like, to find this, exactly. this screwdriver because exactly. I have to have the blue one. Exactly. You know? I yeah. like the blue one the best. I <laughs> That's right. But if you it's put special. the blue one with all the other tools, it's more likely that when you look for it, you'll find it. So mm-hmm. again, like things together, store things that make sense, you know, for a certain task in the same place. Just don't chuck something in a drawer somewhere because then when you want to find the blue one, you're not going to remember what drawer it's in. And because another- you, your mind is, uh, you have so many tasks and ideas in your mind and you're multitasking, it doesn't have time to stick in your mind to remember. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And another stressor is uncomfortable seating. Oh, yes. yeah. I think Feeling right that you need to be mm-hmm. perched or, you know, you bought that chair and it costs a lot of money, but eh, 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 you just can't get your tush comfy in there. That's bad for you. You need to have yeah, a place maybe, where you yes. can just The relax. dogs are on there and there's no room for you. Dog. Or maybe you've got a pile of books there or a pile of coats. That's stressful when you can't even find a great, comfortable mm-hmm. place to sit in mm-hmm. your house. And I'm going to say this, but I know I'm going to make somebody mad at me. Or there are too many pillows on it. Oh, say oh, it so. Stop. <laughs> Is that possible? Too much of a good thing. Could be a bad thing. Okay. That's well, me too. Speaking to a of tea. too much of something, I think it's not just clutter and disorganize things that can be a problem. Sometimes it's it's some things in your home that aren't working together. They're kind of fighting. And I've noticed some houses when I go in, there's so much stuff on the walls. It doesn't feel, the artwork doesn't seem to be uh, yeah. going, working together. Yeah. And it just feels like there's this or there's this uh, kind of arrangement, then there's some other, then there's an odd one here, here, here. And it stresses me out looking at it. 
Yes. And I'm thinking if it's stressing me out, how is it, what's this doing for the people that live here? I couldn't agree with you more. You probably uh, uh, you need- look around your walls. If you've got a lot of stuff on mm-hmm. your walls, um, try taking some of that down. And what we've talked about, fewer, bigger things on the wall is going to mm-hmm. feel better to you than a lot of little things. Exactly, Anita. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Here's another thing that you have to be so careful about. People put up Art just for the sake of putting it up. That's a huge mistake. Yeah. Well, you I have, think they see an empty spot and they go, yeah, oh, exactly. that needs some artwork. But no, you need exactly. those empty spaces. But you also need, if you're going to do artwork, you can either do it in a, um, a nice little grouping or make sure it fits the wall and you've got some breathing room somewhere else. You don't have to fill up every space with art that isn't the right size or the right feel for a room. Well, and think about, uh, you want some empty spaces. You're not going Mm -hmm. to appreciate what you have if there's too much there and your eye is going to feel confused. Mm. Well, can I go back to the pillows? (laughs) I I think you have to. Mm -hmm. I do. I I mean, I threw that out there sort of just like a, a little... Phil Donahue moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she thought she was starting a controversy. Here. I just wanted to stir the pot. Well, stir the pillow. I, I do believe, believe it or not, that you can you can't have too many pillows on a sofa or on a bed because if they if they give you angst to take yes, them off, angst, great word, then mm-hmm. you've got to tone it down. However, one of my biggest tips is to have a big basket. I have one in every room. That can hold all the pillows. So it's not like they're off. It's not like you're walking on them over them, you know, slipping. 
to get somewhere, they're all corralled in a nice basket. Right. So you have a place for them when they're not mm-hmm. in use. I, I there was, I we bought at some point. Oh gosh, this was a long, long time ago. But we bought this set of furniture, and I, you know, I usually wouldn't buy a set, but it was a seat, a, a love seat, a, a sofa, and then a chair and a, and an ottoman. And it just looked great. And it was when I was in my autumnal phase, but back in New York. So early autumnal. She, and so uh, it was in the green. <laughs> and, you know, we have a listener who, um, Chantel understands autumnal and she understands the difference between autumnal and Tuscany. So what? Chantel, I'm giving you a big high five now and, a, and an embrace because. We understand, and <laughs> she's been waiting for this email for us. <laughs> the distinction is lost on Anita and Yvonne, but I will yes. carry on now. Okay. So it was a very lovely, um, sagey dark green. Okay, so I tried it on the store, and I was—I remember buying it after work one day. I had the heels on, and stockings, and the suit, and probably the briefcase with me. And I ate anything. If I had sat on a bed of nails, I probably would have been comfortable. So. <laughs> I was, you know, it was a long day. That was day. an upgrade from how you were. <laughs> exactly. So I sat down. I'm like, this is great. And it was on like, you know, 50% off or something. I'm get, get this whole thing delivered. So they deliver it. It came with so many pillows and the pillows were filled with some sort of, uh, like, foam that you could not penetrate. <laughs> it was oh, like, no. and so the additional, so the pillows themselves, like the puffy backs were big enough. Mm-hmm. Then it had additional large pillows. Then it had, Toss pills all in the same green, by you. Oh my. Oh, and so no. by the time you had all the pillows on it, there was literally like three and three quarters inches. Is this the green <laughs> sofa sit? that I saw? Saw in pictures of your older house. Uh, yeah, it was in my in my living room there. Wow. And so Do you not, not have that sofa anymore. No, I don't have that. Anymore. I sold that. Oh. But uh, but. You know, and when I first got them, I was like, well, I have to use all these pillows that came with. And so I used them all. And like people would, you'd be so close to the end. You could have some people almost like sliding off. <laughs> you couldn't, the pillow, you couldn't even rest on. It was ridiculous. And finally, I was like, and you were going to take them off for those people. Yeah, exactly. I, it's my own house. I have permission not to use every single pillow uh-huh. that came with it. Uh-huh. And then right. we changed over time, changed them out and became more comfortable. But that was the most ridiculous. So, Sofa, love seat, and chair. A little funny. But a little definitely funny. a case where there were too many pillows. Well, mm. uh, speaking of too many pillows, I think there's too many of something else you can have in your house. People? Toys. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about kids. No, toys. I just had a, a sleepover with 15 girls over the weekend. <laughs> oh, so that, no, that's why gonna... that popped into mind. Oh, no, it was it fabulous. It was fabulous. And I wish I was there to eat a piece of that cake. Oh, that cake oh, was extraordinary. Yeah. And the yeah, slices for- were like 10 inches high each. Now, they, oh, they were wow. darling girls. We had a great time. Oh. What is the thing well, that there's too many of? The, the toys. I mean, I'm, I think oh. sometimes, well, I mean, when you had kids, we're, our kids are older. We don't have a lot of toys around the house anymore, but some people are grandparents. Maybe they have toys for their grandkids or maybe you have toys for your kids. I know what I, at one point, I felt like they were old enough to start playing upstairs by themselves for a little bit. So I was so excited to get most of the toys upstairs. Uh, but I had a built in one of my secrets. Uh, for storing the, all these toys when they weren't in use is I had a built in desk and I put a little tension curtain rod. I didn't use it as a desk. I put a tension curtain rod there where the knee hole was oh. and a little curtain. And that's where we would shove the toys. when. They oh, that's a cute use. idea. Oh, that's a smart idea. And well, then when and they grow they, up and they're teenagers or older and they're doing homework, you could take the curtain rod off and now you have a desk. Right. And I had a little secret too. I think I'd mentioned it before is uh, if you've got little kids, we, you couldn't, when we were getting ready to maybe go to Chick-fil-A or something to have some little fun thing or go have a play with a friend, you couldn't go until you picked up all your toys. So you had to oh. put everything up before we would go do something fun. The old Chick-fil-A, dangling the Chick-fil-A. <laughs> That's and right. Let's <laughs> to- toys, if you have, if you're going to build your own house, Make sure you build a space that is, we've had toy closets in both of the houses we've built. And the and when my kids were really little, I would be calling, it was down in our basement, calling and calling and calling. It was a finished basement. 
and my kids would be inside the closet. <laughs> they, <laughs> they took loved- that toy closet really yeah. seriously. They loved it. But I, and now it just holds all of my uh, overflow of, of my decor items. <laughs> You know, it's yep. wonderful. So yeah. if you're going to buy, it'll be, it'll be full of toys house, soon enough. You've got grandbabies. I do. Oh my um, gosh. It, but, um, when, yeah, when they come over, we put the toys down there as well. That is a wonderful thing to make part of your home. I had a hard time corralling those, my little ponies. I cannot even tell you how <laughs> they would, they would stampede, break out, come back around. But yeah, <laughs> we watched a fun home movie over the holidays and it was when my girls were little and we were opening the gifts and I don't know, they were four and five, Aww. you know, that kind of an age. And, mm-hmm. and it was my face and I, op- she was opening something and I was reading the, the, uh, the dish thing and it said, 125 pieces. I was like, oh, what? No. And I was just basically crying. Oh, <laughs> like, I know. Talk about stress. Those poly pockets and they had the tiny little mm-hmm. boots and the tiny little there. And you'd be like, oh my goodness. That's when you, you step get on those them. Clear plastic shoe size containers mm-hmm. and put mm-hmm. everything yeah. in that. Yeah. You know, that's, we just got really good at that. Um, I, I did not mind. I minded when the toy clutter just was all over my house, but I really didn't mind if it's like was in my dining room or, or something because it just of what it symbolized my children playing and being creative. But you're yeah. right, Anita, they had to clean up before we went in anywhere. Well, and I think the thing is, if you have kids, obviously you're going to have toys and you know, you can't, you there's, it's, mm-hmm. you're just going to have to deal with it at some point, but maybe uh, something you can do is what you just suggested, Yvonne is Limit them to one particular room or mm-hmm. just certain areas so your whole house doesn't feel like a toy chest. Yeah. That's, yeah. And good, we always have point. tons of art supplies and things like that. There was always some painting and coloring or something mm-hmm. like that. So those mm-hmm. are kind of fun to corral, you know, just get pretty containers and you can have all the, and you know, some kids, well, they do that in kindergarten, right? It's part of learning too, like sorting it all. So yes, you sort it. put all the markers mm-hmm. in this one and whoever can do that the fastest, something like that. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, there are definitely ways to do that, but you know, the, it is a situation where, you know, it's a certain time in their lives and it doesn't last forever. Then you get to the teenage years and it's just lots of clothes makeup. all over the place <laughs> and makeup and that sort of thing. My What's very specific. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Yvonne. Go ahead. I was going to say my daughter who lives on Capitol Hill, um, their house is a very open concept. It's a hundred years old. They redid it and they have bookshelves in, in the bookshelves in their living room. She just keeps big really pretty baskets. Yeah. And so Anderson oh, can, idea. she'll just pull a basket down. He can play with that when he's done. She'll pull another, well, they'll put it away and put another one. And they have a basement that has a family room and she has, again, shelves with baskets. It's worked out so well. That's a great way to do mm-hmm. it. And then another thing I wanted to bring up because I noticed this at our uh, mountain house was we had some seating, but then we decided we didn't really, you know, it was just kind of a mishmash of leftover stuff we had. And so, you know, we needed a little more comfortable seating. And so we bought a couple more chairs. Well, then it started getting so crowded. There really wasn't a good path around Mm -hmm. the chairs in the living area. Mm -hmm. And it started feeling really stressful to me that there wasn't a good way to arrange them. And there wasn't a good clear path because I, you know, started started feeling kind of closing in Mm -hmm. and feeling cluttered and feeling stressful to me. And we finally took took a bench. It was a pretty big bench. It's like a size, almost the size of a sofa and took it downstairs uh, to another room. And uh, there's a little less seating, but I felt mm-hmm. like, you know what, but what's there is comfortable and you can walk around it. And it just uh, made me, I felt so much better when we did And that. that's, that's oh. the point that you feel better and you, because that is a very tense feeling like, why do I have all these chairs or that you, if you, if your room isn't wide enough to have two end tables, that's not written in stone. Right. Put a pole right. lamp and right. mm-hmm. a cool, you know, pole lamp and a, and an end table at the other side, but don't be a slave to the furniture you have. You can oh, say yeah. goodbye While to While you it. were saying that, Anita, I was thinking about when I released the altar from the living room. I mean, oh, I, yes. Oh, yes. I couldn't be happier. That's, I mean, I that really- sounds really funny, Kelly. 
can I I tried I and tried to make it work and I would right. think about it and I would think how I could work around it and put stuff in front of it and then then it, at some point Peter's like are you gonna open a store in here because I had so much stuff it was so big <laughs> I had That's so right. much stuff on it it looked mm-hmm. ridiculous but I was trying to kind of cover it up because it was so weird Ah, oh, it was so freeing. I felt so much better. And I really didn't realize that that piece of furniture was causing me so much stress. Mm-hmm. It, it, and so a lot of the things that we're talking about today, you may not even realize that it's ca- you know, adding to some stress. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it would be, we would just absolutely love for every single one of our listeners and everybody in the whole world to have absolutely no outside mm-hmm. stressors in their right. entire life, whether it be <laughs> right. work or children or whatever. But yeah. you know, you have those already. So you don't want your yes. house to be an additional stressor. Well, and I think a good way, and I I absolutely agree with you, Kelly. And what I would suggest is if you don't have an idea of what in your house is stressing you, to kind of just make a little stress diary for a week every time something in your house starts bothering you. Just write it down till you have a list and then you can have an action plan. Typically, these things are there because you haven't wanted to deal with them. I mean, let's face it. That's a very good point. Exactly. And, he, but and usually and it's just like, oh, this is the way life is. So I just have to deal right. with this. But these mm-hmm. are pretty easy fixes. You know, I mean, well, picking stuff a lot up. of them you're dreading handling because yeah. if you if you did, weren't dreading it, you would have already dealt with it. But so many of these things, once you do them, you're going to say, why didn't I do this before? Uh, it, it repairs. Maybe yeah. there's a repair that's driving you nuts. You think I don't want to spend the two hundred dollars. Well, if you can afford it. Go ahead and do it because you're going to be so happy to have it repaired. Oh, yeah. Well, here's one that I didn't even really know necessarily was causing me stress. It was just kind of the way I always did it. I always did the laundry. And when the stuff came out of the dryer, I would take it to my master bedroom and throw it on the bed. Now, when the I started doing this when the kids were little and lots of times they'd be watching Elmo or a movie and they'd be on the bed and I would just be folding and... You know, nine times out of 10, somebody would knock my folded pile over, but (laughs) that's okay. I'll do it again. But, you know, we were spending time together and I was seeing what they were watching and all that kind of stuff. So that was just something I always did. So then Mm -hmm. they get older. I still did it. And I did it in my old house. And then I started doing it in this house. But now I don't even have a TV in my room anymore. Remember, we went to iPad. So I, you know, there no, and nobody's crawling into bed to watch cartoons anymore while I'm folding the laundry, but I was still doing the same thing so that I throw it on the bed. And then of course I'd be like, Oh, I got to go do something else. Or, you know, the, the phone would ring or and it I'd, sits and it sits and oh, then you forget your- about it. Right. Yes. And then you come mm-hmm. up and you're tired and it's whatever time, you know, Oh, and it, then you can't go to sleep. And all then it's there. And then, then the clean it's laundry. It's taunting you. That's gets, what it is. It's yeah, taunting I'm not going to fold the laundry now. It's whatever time of night it is. And so I, then you throw it on the floor. So now I have a pile oh. of <laughs> clean clothes that are, are just now laying on the floor in my master bedroom. And, you know, we don't have a huge master bedroom. So then I have to walk over them. So now I'm just stressed hearing about this. I know. Yeah. Honest, but honestly, I know. <laughs> it was such a like a, a like a light bulb moment for me when I was like, hey, mm. wait a minute. Like you don't have to do it this way. So mm. now, you know, and granted, we were kind of in the, the still the throes of the renovation where the laundry room is and all of that. But, mm-hmm, you know, I could mm-hmm. have set up a card table like one of Yvonne's, you know, Christmas decorating tables, tables, something yeah. like that. I could have done that, but I didn't even know that that was stressing me really in particular. You weren't paying attention to it. And yeah. I just, it was just the way I did it. And this is just the way it goes. And you just have to get through it. And then I, you know, pick away at the pile and <laughs> it would be gone. But then guess what? It comes back. It happens again. It happens again. Well, and so, Kelly, so now I do it a totally different way. What do and you I do, Kelly? Don't let the laundry come into my room. Okay. Well, now I have, I do have a table set up, which is sort of temporary, but it, when it comes out of the dryer, I'm folding it right in that, in that little laundry mm-hmm. area mm-hmm. on the table. So if you don't have a separate laundry area, maybe what you do is, you know, just, uh, off the top of my head, a quick fix. If you if you only have the top of your dryer and washer to work with, maybe you just take a few things out of the dryer that you have time to fold and put away. Fold and put mm. them away. Leave the other ones in the dryer until you can get to it. Go ahead. Clean out your closet. Then head straight to Quince. 
I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Uh, oh. Don't make a pile mm-hmm. somewhere. What I want to point out about what you're saying here is it may not be something specific to your house, but something to do with your routines. Yes, in the that house. was my routine. Right. It was so, so look silly. at these routines. There may be a way to streamline your process. Right. So kind of look at that. So important because all of our people listening, you should really take an inventory as you go about your day, like, like you said, a little stress journal and figure out those things that just are not giving you peace and and that are welcoming. And that there's things that you, instead of embracing your home, you want to run away from your home and find a different solution. And like Kelly said, just doing what she did instead of putting it on her bed what a de-stressor that was. Oh, that really caused me so much stress because I'd come back into my room and it'd still be there. And so not only is it like making your room messy, but it's something hanging over the, your head that you have to do. And it's mm-hmm. one of my least favorite tasks is Mine putting too. the stuff mm-hmm. away in oh, the drawers. Yeah. Because then I'm going into these rooms that also need to be tidied and your whole day is gone. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh, well, back I to so the laundry, agree. what you were talking about, Kelly, something that I've changed is... I've been so busy working that I would pull the stuff out of the dryer and throw it on the counter in the laundry room. Well, it wasn't in my bedroom, but meanwhile, the pile's getting higher, higher, higher of stuff I needed to do. And I thought, you know, it's just going to be so much more comfortable for me. I'm going to be so much less stressed if I can just stay on top of this. So that when it comes out of the dryer, I go ahead and fold it right away. It may mean that I get delayed getting back to work for 15 minutes, but you know what? It's worth it. And it's Mm -hmm. really helped keep my stress level down there for sure. Mm, Good point. Well, today we hope we've given you just a little bit of a glimmer into maybe why you get stressed out in your home. And we hope that we've given you a solution just by writing down those things and things that occur and, and chunking at them and getting them organized and put in, in a better pattern, maybe of doing things. And you're, you will feel much better about your home. Oh, and yeah, we, yeah, yeah I know. Ah, moments That's right. Of- 
Just remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey, everybody. We want to thank you so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www.decoratingtipsandtricks.com. Or you can subscribe through Apple Podcast or any of your favorite podcast listeners. When you subscribe, DTT comes free right to you three days a week. So until next time.